Welcome back to the channel guys and today we have a very exciting tutorial. I'm going to be covering the Creality K1C 3D printer. Now even if you're not into 3D printers or you don't have a 3D printer, this is still going to be a very interesting video because I'm going to start by sculpting something in Blender. I'm going to take it through the process of exporting it as an STL file, then taking it into Creality's proprietary um, slicer software, which is called Creality Print. And then from there we're going to be printing it into K1C. And towards the end of it all, I'll be kind of giving you some highlights about this printer, what I think is really nice about it, and tell you some of the key features of this printer. And then you can kind of decide for yourself if you do like 3D printers, if this is the one you'd be interested in, um, you can definitely check it out. There'll be links in the description. So yeah, once again, big thanks to our sponsor, Creality, for sending this 3D printer. So let's get into the video. So whenever I'm sculpting, I always like to look at reference images, which I do have open on my side monitor. And what I'm doing here is I'm just blocking out the main shape. This is always going to be the easiest way to make something complicated is to start with very simple shapes and then gradually build on the detail. So once I had it kind of looking right in the front and side perspectives, I went and I kind of joined the two objects together. And then I kind of fused it together with a mesh modifier as you can see over here. And then from here, it's just a matter of going into the sculpt mode and I gave it some dynamic topology. And then I started kind of just sculpting and refining the shape a little bit. At this point, I'm just keeping the details very low, but you can see here, I'm just making the main shape, very simple clay strips brush. And then I'm just roughly laying out the rest of the body. Now this is, like I said, very rough. And eventually when I got further into the sculpting, I kind of changed some of this, but I'm just looking at the references and just making these sort of what I call placeholder shapes. And then from there, um, I'm doing the exact same thing with the face. So instead of trying to make any details, I'm just kind of making where the eyes roughly sit, where the nose kind of roughly sit, and kind of where the chin is. Now I'm actually sculpting this head non-symmetrically. So I'm not using the mirror modifier, which I do sometimes like to do, because um, especially with Thanos, his face isn't exactly the same on both sides because of scarring. So I decided to give it a go, and you can see here I'm just getting kind of like the chin and the mouth in place, and then just kind of shaping the head. Um, yeah, this was actually pretty easy to do just to get the main shape into place um, while I was looking at the reference images. And now there's a good hour and a half, which I didn't record because I forgot to hit the record button. But at this point, I was just finishing off some of the details with the clay strips brush and the crease brush. Just adding scars and running them along, adding little cracks in armor, taking them away in some places where I felt it was a little bit too much. And when I was done with that, I just simply added in a cylinder, which I made into a very simple base. And I kind of just took into the back and this is kind of like, I wanted to keep it kind of simple because I didn't want it to take away from the details of the actual bust. So I didn't want to add any sort of like fancy features to it. And once I was done with that, I once again just joined these two together. And I just kind of made sure that the base was sitting very flat. That's going to be important with the printing. And then I was able to fuse it all together with a mesh, remesh modifier. So from here, whatever object you might be working with, if you're following along, you wanna take it to a slicer. And this is actually really easy to do, especially in Blender. All we have to do is select the object once it's ready. And by the way, this object is watertight, just in case you're not familiar with 3D printing. Um, we want something that technically, if this was in water, it wouldn't have any holes in it, okay? It could hold air or keep water out. It's what we call an airtight object. Again, that's what we want. It's fully enclosed and with it active, you can simply go to file. Then you can go to your export option and you want to export this as an STL. I'm going to go to my desktop and just fanos.stl will do and I'm going to go export STL. Now we have something we can take into our slicer. Now what is a slicer? So we're going to go over to the internet and you can just simply type in in your search browser Creality Print. And then you should see an option somewhere for Creality Slicer software download. Very easy. And it's just a standard thing you would have experienced before with downloading anything. You got an option for Windows, Macs, and Linux. All you have to do is go to your um, operating system. And the latest version here, and while I'm recording this, is 5.14. So I've already gone ahead and just downloaded this Windows executable. And I've already installed it onto my computer. It was super simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the software. And you can see this is it over here. Now the cool thing is it knows exactly what plate I'm using here because I've told it what machine I'm using. So the first time you install this, it'll actually um, bring up a pop-up and it'll ask you what printer you're using. 
Even after that, if you have a different printer in the future, you can always come and you can change the printer. You can even change the nozzle as different printers work with different nozzles. Okay, but the Creality Print here is a very clean, very easy to use software. I'm gonna show you actually how easy it is. So what you're gonna simply do, and this is how I prefer to import, is I'm just gonna take that STL on my desktop and just simply drag it into the scene. And here you can see it is, it's very small. So all you have to do is if it's really small or too big, is simply just click on it. Over here in the objects, you can see it's active and you can come here and right click. And you have all of these options. You can actually click on scale or you can just come up here and select the scale tool here. But what I'm gonna do is just click on scale. And just like we do in Blender, we can just click on the little gizmo and drag and release, and then it scales it up for us. I'm gonna go with something of this scale here, I think looks really good. And what I'm gonna do is because this object has a lot of um, areas that have steep angles, um, 3D printers can actually print up the angles to a certain degree. But because of the stepping effect that we get at a certain point, it doesn't have enough area to actually lay down plastic on top of other plastic. So our filament starts to sag. And for that reason, most slicers, in fact, all of them have a thing built in called um, supports. Now these are auto supports. You don't have to go add them manually, though in some slicers you can. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over to here where it says support, and you're gonna go ahead and enable the support. Now by default, it gives us this one here called normal. A lot of people don't use that. It kind of, in my opinion, it's not as efficient. Um, the more common one to use is the tree. And essentially that gives us like a branching, branching structure. So imagine a little tree growing alongside our sculpture and it's gonna make contact at steep angles with its little end branches and it's gonna help create a support. These supports are also really easy to remove after we 3D print it. And they're generally not that noticeable. Okay, so we've just enabled and the tree auto here. You can also come here and change the angle um, threshold here. Now the thing is 30 works pretty good, so I'm gonna go and stick with that. In fact, most of the defaults here with the exception of um, the normal here, you probably just wanna change that to tree and everything else is fine. Now that being said, there's also something called a raft or a base. Essentially, that's just extra plastic that extends at the base, just to give you more grip to your plate. Now, in this case, we have a nice base here, and it's well adhered, and it's a lot of surface area. So I'm not gonna worry about adding a raft. But if you had something with a little amount of surface area and it was quite big, it's worth sometimes adding that in to give you more grip to your plate. I guess we have that set up now, so all we have to do to generate all of this is simply come here to where it says slice plate, and then click on it. And here you can see it's generated these supports and it's calculated where it's gonna need it most. You can see areas with steep overhang or angles that are exceeding um, 30 degrees, it's decided that's where it wants to add it in. And this is really gonna help our plastic filament have somewhere to kind of lay down as we're going up. Now these supports will be easy to remove, which is really handy. So the way we actually export this now is really simple. In fact, I'll, it's worth noting that you can actually directly connect your device for the internet. And um, so it'll use your network. But in this case, I'm just gonna go for a much simpler option, which I prefer anyway. And that is to simply just export this G code and the printer will be able to understand it. So we can just put this on a USB thumb drive and then plug it into the printer and then just select it. We'll get to that in a little bit. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go and click here on print plate. You can see there's a little um, arrow that goes up. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on export plate. I'm gonna select my desktop, and by default it's called a G code over here, which is what I want, so I'll just leave that default name, and I'm gonna click on save. And it just says okay over here, and now we've got some G code that we've exported. It's here on my desktop, and that I'm gonna put on a thumb drive now, so I can use it in the K1C. So you can see here is the 3D printer. Now when I got this out of the box, it really was very simple to assemble. All I had to do was put this little monitor on here, just stick it on there, it was very simple, just slides on. And then I had to just come here and attach this little spool holder at the back and then thread in my PLA over here. And then you can see the rest of it is very straightforward. Um, it's not a lot of other things that are attached to it. It's very clean. And all I had to do as well was just get three little um, screws out of here that held the plate to the bottom while it was being transported. So um, getting this set up was extremely easy. 
and um, it's very beginner friendly. So that's all you need to know about that little bit. That's why I didn't even really bother covering that because it was so straightforward. But all you have to do is once you want to print, once you have your G code on your thumb drive, you can just stick it in there and then you can come here to your little display and it'll let you know there's a flash drive. You can go to your file and then just go to your USB drive and then over here I can see I have that Thanos plate G code. I'm just going to go ahead and click on it and then you'll see what the 3D print looks like. And here it is, it's now done printing, and I'm going to take it off the printing bed. There we go. Doesn't matter that that little bit broke off, because that's just the support. But you can see, this is what it is. I'm going to clean it up and I'll show you a little bit closer. And here we have it, a nice clean print on the Creality K1C. I think it looks really good, and um, you could obviously go bigger if you wanted to. I just kind of printed this more on the smaller side, but I think it still looks absolutely fantastic. So this is going to be a nice little ornament in my office. But yeah, that's kind of what you can expect from this 3D printer. It didn't actually take that long at all, even with this sort of size. Um, I think it only took like a little over two hours. And there's a lot of little details in there. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this 3D printer. Some of the main highlights um, and things that you want to consider before you might want to buy a 3D printer. So the build volume on the K1C is 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. And like I said, that's going to be ample for most projects unless you're trying to do something bigger. So it's about the standard size you can expect of a desk 3D printer these days. Also, another thing to mention is that the thing that sets the K1C apart is that it can print carbon filament. Now, actually, a lot of 3D printers can do this. However, they get worn out really quick because the um, fiber, that's the carbon fiber that's actually added to the filament um, adds a lot more friction and therefore the nozzles and internal components wear out a lot faster. Um, whereas this printer, the K1C, has been engineered to have a much stronger chamber in there and much stronger components on the nozzle. Um, kind of resisting more of that wear. It will eventually wear out, as will all kind of um, printer nozzles, but this one is specifically the K1C designed to handle carbon printing filament. Also, another really cool thing about the K1C is that it is actually enclosed and it has some nice rubber seals running along the door. And that kind of really helps eliminate a lot of the odor that you get traditionally with 3D printers. So that's kind of another really cool consideration about the K1C. Also, the K1C comes with a built-in camera that allows you to connect to the Wi-Fi. So if you're out and about, it's kind of, sometimes it's going to be really important to check on your work. So you might go to work in the morning, you might come home late, and at any point you can kind of check the progress and see if anything has gone wrong, as there's always a potential of that happening with 3D printing. You might even run out of filament. So that's a really handy thing with the K1C. Also, another thing I want to mention about the K1C, and I think this is going to be one of the main things I want to hit home here, is that it's just a really, really easy 3D printer to use. And that's why, if you're considering getting a 3D printer, I would definitely recommend this one. Also, it actually prints really fast. Um, 300 millimeters a second, that's how fast it can go up to. And watching this print, it was just insane. I know I did a time lapse of the printing, but even without the time lapse, it's really kind of hard to actually wrap your head around how fast that um, nozzle's moving when it's printing. So it's a fantastically fast printer, 
very easy to use. Um, right out of the box, there's not a lot you have to do to set it up. They pretty much assembled most things for you. So this is a beginner friendly printer and I would definitely recommend it. With all of that said, if you are interested in getting this printer or maybe cheaper and smaller printers, um, definitely check out Creality in the description below. I'm gonna put some links to Creality. You can check out their products. They make really, really good stuff and they're a very respected brand in the 3D printer community. And I'm not just saying that because they sponsored this video. I know people who own Creality 3D printers and there's a lot of channels out there who cover 3D printers and it's always, um, they always do come up as a very well-respected um, 3D printer manufacturer and their filament is also really good. I even use their um, hyperfilament on a lot of my other 3D printers that are not even Creality 3D printers. So uh, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Once again, don't forget to check that those links in the description below and I'll see you guys next time.